He wanted to be a buck for life, and now he is. Mike Evans and the Buccaneers agree to a two-year deal. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> What's up and welcome into this Tuesday episode of Locked on Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked on Bucks your first listen to review every single day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JayYarko underscore Bucks credentialed member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com. Here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And for that, I want to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked On Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, just general thoughts, plus one-on-one conversations with me via text message. Head to jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Bucks to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On this episode of Locked On Bucks, we are talking about Antoine Winfield Jr. potentially getting a long-term deal wrapped up prior to the franchise tag deadline and the domino effect from that. But of course, We are starting with the headline that had Buccaneers fans pumped up on Monday morning. Mike Evans has agreed to a two-year, $52 million deal with $35 million guaranteed, locking him in with the Bucs for the next two seasons. The news broke on Monday morning from Mike Garofolo of NFL Network, courtesy of Mike Evans agent Derek Gilmore, now the Bucs can turn their focus on getting Baker Mayfield locked up, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Of course, on yesterday's episode, I spoke a lot about the Evans situation and the quote that Gilmore put out about Evans wanting to play with an elite quarterback to be paid like one of the top receivers in the NFL and that winning another Super Bowl was a key priority. And I spoke a lot about how the Bucs still made the most sense, but that all signs pointed to Evans testing free agency because that's the information that we had. Rick Stroud of the Tampa Bay Times was doing the same thing. Greg Allman was doing the same thing. Jenna Lane was doing the same thing because that was the most up-to-date information that we had. Well, things took a drastic change after all of that came out over the weekend. Rick Stroud tweeted out a quote from Gilmore that I do believe was texted by Gilmore to Stroud that said, quote, Mike called me last night and said, I want to be a buck for life. Myself and Darren Jones have worked hard to get this deal done. End quote. What a difference a day makes, right? So here's the thing. Everybody was hoping that this deal would get done. Jason Light, Todd Bowles, Mike Evans, Baker Mayfield, especially the fans. Nobody wanted to see Evans leave but that started to feel like a legitimate possibility the closer we got to the new league year. Now, he's making $26 million a year, and while we don't have the actual structure of that deal yet, a little information has started to trickle out about it. We know that there's $35 million guaranteed, but we have yet to hear if there are any void years to help the cap hit. Now, according to Jenna Lane of ESPN, the deal is front-loaded with $29 million of the 35 guaranteed coming in the first year. Greg Allman of Fox Sports said that the deal is a max value with the base salary being a better deal for the Bucks and won't put Evans high in the rankings among wide receiver deals, but there are plenty of incentives that he could hit. This You know, these pieces of information, you start to put those together. It leads me to believe that there will be void years attached to the $29 million that he's going to get from the jump. And that most of that is likely a signing bonus, 
which the team will then spread out over the course of the next few years, probably adding in two, three, maybe even four void years to really spread out that hit. Of course, once the details become official, we will talk about that here on the show. Uh, as soon as I have that information, of course, I'll send it out to the insiders uh, you know, via text message. But one of those insiders, Mike, longtime insider, I think he was one of the first ones, he texted me and asked, okay, but is that his way of saying that he only has two more years left or what? And I think there are some others that might be asking the same question. I mean, the quote from his agent was that he wanted to be a buck for life, but two years is not going to make him a buck for life, you know, guaranteed. He's only going to be 33 when this deal is over. And you think that he would continue playing if he can or if he wants to. So here's my take on that question. And I texted Mike back, but I want to address it here on the show. I think that after this current two-year deal is up, you're going to see Evans take a year-by-year -year approach the same way that we're seeing Levante David do right now and the way we've seen other players do in the past. I don't think Evans would be done after two more years, but... Honestly, you just never know. At that point, he's still relatively young, um, but he would have also made a ton of money over the course of his career, and he can start to focus on other things. I know Mike values his family time above everything else, and he may look at a situation being a 33-year-old and say, you know what? I'm still healthy. I'm still young. My family is taken care of. My grandchildren are going to be taken care of. It's time to sit back, spend time with my daughters, and watch them grow up. He wouldn't be the first athlete to do it. He wouldn't be the last athlete to do it either. On the flip side, I think it's just as likely that he gets to 33 years old, has a couple more thousand-yard seasons under his belt, and he decides that he wants to play until he's 35, and he keeps going. Either way, that's a bridge that he and the Bucks will cross when they get to it. Right now, Mike Evans is locked and loaded with the Buccaneers through the 2025 season. Again, we don't know the full structure of the contract, but this was the first domino that had to fall for Jason Light and the Buccaneers. We know that there's other priority free agents that they want to sign, that they want to take care of. Baker Mayfield, Antoine Winfield Jr., Levante David, Tristan Wirfs still needs his extension. We don't know what's going to happen with Russell Gage. We don't know what's going to happen with Carlton Davis. But I've talked on this show, Evan has talked on this show about Mike and Baker being kind of dominoes 1A and 1B. And one of those two, we're going to be the first one to fall to set everything in motion. Now, the Bucks are reportedly looking at getting another mega deal done ahead of Tuesday's franchise tag deadline. That is next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. I know for me, between my day job, the podcast, and traveling every weekend due to my son's schedule, I find myself drained faster and faster every day, but still having to push through in all situations, telling myself it's for the greater good, regardless of how I feel in the moment often ignoring my own needs in service of others. Speaking to someone on the outside without a personal bias in my day-to-day -day life can be extremely beneficial and help me reshuffle what I view as a priority versus what should actually be a priority. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. 
That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen review every single day. Every day, make sure you are coming back tomorrow. We will be going live on YouTube in the early afternoon on Wednesday. I will be in Cleveland Tuesday night taking my son to the Celtics Cavaliers game. So as soon as I get home from Cleveland, I will be going live. I was going to record ahead of time, but with all of this news starting to trickle out, I did not want to risk missing out on something and making you guys wait. So make sure you are subscribed on YouTube, have the notifications turned on. We will be going live early in the afternoon. In the meantime, though, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. One of those bits of news that I am afraid we would miss is, according to Tony Pauline, there were rumblings over the weekend in Indianapolis that the Bucks and safety Antoine Winfield Jr. were quote-unquote zeroing in on a multi-year deal that would reset the safety market ahead of free agency, more importantly, ahead of the franchise tag deadline. Pauline said that the deal will be in the three-year range, possibly as many as four years, and will be worth around $20 million a year. However, if a deal cannot be reached by 4 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, the Bucks will tag Winfield before turning their attention back to Mayfield. Again, more on Baker Mayfield coming up in a little bit. Winfield is the top safety on the market this season and is coming off of one of the mo most historic seasons by a safety this century. As I've noted a few times, the estimated market value for Winfield on spot track is $18.4 million. And the franchise tag was going to run the Bucks a little over $16 million. Getting a deal done with Winfield now, especially before the franchise tag deadline, helps the Bucks in a couple of different ways. For starters, it locks in one of the top safeties in the NFL for the next three to four years on a deal that will be one of the highest in the league for a safety for now. By the time the deal is done, it may not even crack the top five. So you're getting a Pro Bowl player at a discount down the line. Next, the deal is still short enough that Winfield can cash in again before he even turns 30 years old. So the Bucks could then lock him in again, making him another one of these Bucks for life. Then you have the resetting of the safety market where Winfield breaks the bank, and deservedly so, and other teams are going to have to overspend on safeties that are not nearly as good as Antoine Winfield Jr. because the demand compared to the talent available is going to drive the market up and it's going to hurt those teams' abilities to then sign other players. So taking a look at kind of the way the safety market looks, after Antoine Winfield Jr., you have safeties like Kevin Byard, who was phenomenal with Tennessee, but really had a huge drop-off in Philadelphia after that trade was made. You got Micah Hyde, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Xavier McKinney, Kyle Duggar, Taylor Rapp, Geno Stone, Eddie Jackson, Buda Baker's on a club option, so he may become available. Uh, of course, you have Jordan Whitehead and Mike Edwards, who I've talked about on this show, a potential reunion with either one of those. But none of those guys are the caliber of Antoine Winfield Jr. Like, not even close. So in signing Winfield, you have now locked up not only two of your own homegrown players, but you have locked up arguably the top player in two different position groups ahead of free agency, keeping them away from other teams that were going to be interested. In fact, I think Antoine Woodfield Jr.'s 
um, his interest among the, the open market was going to be much larger than Mike Evans. And I don't think there was any question that Mike Evans was the number one wide receiver on the market after T Higgins had been tagged. And again, I go back to the fact that T Higgins would have been the top choice because of his age, not because the production matched that of Mike Evans over the course of his career, because let's be honest, there isn't a player in the NFL that has done what Mike Evans has done, but I digress. Again, it's all about the guaranteed money. But $20 million a year for Winfield always seemed to be kind of in that realm and, and in the cards, which is why I thought the tag, although I'm sure Winfield would not have loved being tagged without working out that long-term deal, that was always going to be a great option for the Buccaneers because they actually would have saved money next season with the franchise tag compared to what is now being rumored at a $20 million a year deal that the Bucs and, and Winfield are hashing out. Uh, you, This is probably going to be a deal with a heavy signing bonus that they can stretch out over some void years, much like what the rumblings are with the Evans deal, taking a look at some of the pieces of information that I talked about earlier in the show. So even though it's a $20 million a year average, that doesn't mean that it's a $20 million a year base salary or $20 million a year guaranteed. It may be, if it's a four-year, we'll say it's a four-year $80 million deal, there may only be $40 million guaranteed, and 20 of that is, is signing bonus. You know, it, it's one of those situations. Um, granted, if it's going to be a four-year $80 million deal, you're probably looking at closer to like 50 to 55 guaranteed. But again, a huge hefty signing bonus that you can stretch out over the course of those four years plus into like maybe two or three void years. And then when you come up towards the end of that deal, you can lock him into an extension and you can rework those void years as the salary cap continues to climb year after year after year. So when you absorb those void years into the new salary cap, with a rework deal, now all of a sudden that cap hit isn't as bad. The dead money is no longer there. And you can really give yourself some wiggle room. If the Bucs are planning, and they should, on keeping Antoine Winfield Jr. for the course of his career, the way they've done with Levante David, the way they're appearing to do with Mike Evans, then you have no qualms about giving Antoine Winfield Jr. a huge signing bonus, adding on some void years, knowing that before he's 30 years old, you've already got him locked into another four-year extension on top of this deal. And by then, I mean, we could be talking about a salary cap that is coming up on or has hit $300 million. Then the percentage that Antoine Winfield Jr. is eating up isn't nearly as high as it's going to be right out of the gate. But with all of that said, Signing Antoine Winfield Jr. ahead of the franchise tag deadline also solves another big problem for the Buccaneers. That is next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Get buckets on your first bet with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, futures bets, and more. Right now, the Boston Celtics are favorites to win the NBA Finals at plus 260, while defending champion Denver Nuggets are the favorites out of the Western Conference at plus 440. And FanDuel already has odds up for Super Bowl 59, where the San Francisco 49ers are the favorites at plus 500. The Kansas City Chiefs are plus 650 to go ahead and three-peat, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are tied with the New Orleans Saints, Las Vegas Raiders, Arizona Cardinals, and Seattle Seahawks at plus 7,500. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Wrapping 
things up here on a Tuesday edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And let's just take a quick moment here to relish the fact that the Bucks got the Mike Evans deal done. Let's take a moment to just think about the idea that they get Antoine Winfield Jr. signed to a contract before 4 o'clock on Tuesday. If that comes to fruition, this almost becomes a three birds with one stone kind of situation because then the Buccaneers can tag Baker Mayfield. All right, stop. Stop. Stop yelling at the screen. Stop yelling at your AirPods or your car stereo. And, and just give me a minute here. Stay with me. Think about it this way. Baker Mayfield has some interest on the open market, and that interest is starting to increase. We know that the Atlanta Falcons are interested, and he would be reuniting with coaches that he played for before back when he was with the Los Angeles Rams. Now, you have the Broncos moving on from Russell Wilson. You have the Patriots, who are reportedly interested. You have the Minnesota Vikings who are reportedly interested. And, you know, you, you have now a growing group of teams that could be in on Baker Mayfield. It's not crazy to think that Mayfield will have more interest and get more money than Kirk Cousins is about to get if they're in free agency, if it gets that far. And his market value keeps climbing. When we started talking about these offseason moves after the playoff loss to Detroit, Baker's estimated market value was around $16 million a year. And it has steadily climbed to the point now that some media members and experts believe that he is going to get $30 to $35 million a year, maybe even as high as 40 if there is a bidding war once free agency begins. The franchise tag for the quarterback is a little over $36 million, and it is fully guaranteed, more than what you're probably going to pay Baker annually on a long-term deal, but this is why you tag him. We know the Buccaneers want him back. We know he wants to come back to Tampa. However, according to Diana Rossini of The Athletic, he is not going to take a hometown discount to stay with the Bucs. If Baker hits the market, there will be interested teams and the Bucs could get outbid for his services, leaving them with a whole new set of problems for next season. Now, I do find it a little hard to believe that the Bucs would lock up, ba or, uh, lock up Mike Evans without some sort of belief or strong feeling that Baker was coming back, but Evans was their top priority. So there was always that chance that things with Baker didn't work out. If the Bucs sign Winfield and can use the franchise tag on Baker, now he doesn't get to hit the market and the two sides get that extended, exclusive negotiating time to work out a long-term deal before the deadline to sign the franchise tag and they can get something hammered out that works best for both sides. And yes, absolutely. Just like I talked about on yesterday's episode with Mike Evans. Well, not just like, but very similar to the situation that I mentioned yesterday with Mike Evans. Baker could get upset and say he isn't going to work out a long-term deal and that he's going to play under the tag for the $36.3 million because it's it's guaranteed, but it also took away his ability to have the market raise his own stock and increase his earning potential. But I don't think that's a risk that Baker is willing to take. Yes, he had a great season last year. He had career high numbers last year, but there's always that chance with Baker Mayfield that that 2022 version or even the 2021 version of Baker Mayfield shows up for a year on that franchise tag and the Bucs finish 4-13 and 13 or 5-12, and 12, and then what happens? He hits the market in 2025 and has the same kind of value and interest that he had last offseason when the Bucs got him for pennies on the dollar. No, Baker doesn't want to be on a one-year deal because if that one year is bad, 
that also destroys his future earning potential. Using the tag on Mayfield as a negotiation tool would be the best thing for the Bucks, giving them the exclusive rights to speak with him and work this thing out for the next two, three, four years. Letting him hit the market, knowing that the Falcons, the Patriots, the, the Vikings are all interested, the Broncos could be interested. Yeah, it, it there will be suitors. And there will be suitors that have more money to play with than the Buccaneers do. So if you get Antoine locked up before that four o'clock deadline, you have to use the tag on Baker Mayfield and make sure that he doesn't go anywhere. Then you have until July to get that long-term deal knocked out. But you go back and you take a look, and I know some of some of you watching, some of you listening are not Baker fans, and I get it. I understand. There's no denying that he was much, much better than many people anticipated he was going to be. There is a reason the Bucs went out and hired Liam Cohen as their offensive coordinator. There is a reason that Mike Evans is coming back. And it's because they want to build off the success of last year. They're going to be in a similar offense. Another year together is going to make them better. The Bucs don't want to lose Baker. And Baker has a soft spot for Tampa because they gave him that opportunity to be able to make $30, $35 million a year by going out there and proving that he can get the job done. But if Baker isn't back, what does Tampa Bay do at the quarterback position? And I've brought this up before. What do they do? Do they sign Kirk Cousins? Because that's probably not going to work very well. Do they trade for Justin Fields? Most of you know how I feel about that. That's a terrible idea. I would rather sign me to a league minimum deal because you're going to get the same results and it's going to be bad. You could draft one, but if what Mike Evans' agent said over the weekend was true, Mike Evans doesn't want to play with a rookie quarterback. He wants to play with an elite quarterback. And again, I go back to, I don't think Baker Mayfield is an elite quarterback, but I think there's only three in the NFL. So elite in what sense? And elite can be, you know, in the eye of the beholder. The Bucs this season, it's Baker Mayfield or bust because on the open market, you're not going to have anyone that will perform as well. In the draft, you're not getting anyone at 26 that is going to perform as well. You may not get somebody at 26 that can perform at all. So if it's easier, and none of this is going to be easy. I do not envy the job that Jason Light has right now. But if it's easier to get this deal with Antoine Winfield Jr. done before 4 o'clock today as you're watching or listening to this, if you are listening or watching on Tuesday, if it's easier to get that extension done so that you can use the tag on Baker, then focus on that. But if that's not the easier route, you have to lock up Baker. And maybe they're close enough that they feel like they can go ahead and tag Winfield and they'll still get Baker done before the open negotiating window. But that deal has to get done in the next week. Or you are putting this franchise in 2024, potentially 2025. You may be putting this extension that you just gave Mike Evans at severe risk of being two years of unmitigated failure. And maybe the Bucs do fail bringing back Baker Mayfield, but he is your best chance right now. Kirk Cousins isn't going to do it. Ryan Tannehill isn't going to do it. Michael Penix Jr. is not going to do it this season. J.J. McCarthy is not going to do it this season. It's If you want a shot at a fifth straight playoff appearance, Baker needs to be the quarterback for this team in this offense with these players. Then you can worry about everything else later.
So whatever avenue it takes to get Baker done in the next week, you do it. But again, you can save yourself a lot of frustration and heartache if you can knock out this Antoine deal and slap that tag on Baker Mayfield to make sure that you have plenty of time, nothing but time, to get that long-term deal worked out and make him the quarterback of your team for the next couple of seasons. With that, I'm going to bid you all a fair adieu. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, early afternoon, we will be going live on YouTube. I will tweet out and I will text the insiders when I have a better idea of exactly what time that's going to be. But keep a lookout in the early afternoon to go live. Again, I would have done an episode early, but with this Antoine Winfield Jr. stuff, with the franchise tag deadline coming up at 4 o'clock, if the Bucks make any kind of moves, I want to be able to bring that to you on Wednesday. So we're going to go live on YouTube. In the meantime, though, please check out everything going on over at BucksNation.com. Follow on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks. Become an insider. Go to JointSubtext.com slash LockedOnBucks to sign up today. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. But to thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.